here in Richmond. They'll be given the green light and we'll be underway. And I think what's really important here in this first game is who gets to go first. Yeah, that, that is definitely significant. Uh, the dredge deck is one of those decks that the first two turns of the game, sometimes it looks like not a lot is going on. And then all of a sudden, turn three, they've got this giant board state. And you're just like, oh, when did this happen? You know? And so being able to establish that and potentially be attacking on turn four and five instead of the scapeshift player winning on turn five is huge. For Collins, he's going to start things off with a Valakut. Simply pass the turn back over to Long. For Long, he's going to go down to 17 and get himself a stomping ground. Now, what's interesting about that number is that's one less land needed for scapeshift. An insolent neonate is what David will search up as we head back over to Col oh, excuse me, will play as we head back over to Collins. There's your green source and windswept teeth. It's an untapped one, which is a pretty big deal. Collins also has a copy of Cinderglade in hand, but that would be entering the battlefield tapped currently. So a basic forest, and there's a mountain that he's going to search up. Just curious which way. It'll be far seek, so a little shortcutting there. There's your mountain. Save the shuffle plus present twice, and then we're going to head back over to David Long. Let's see if David can get this dredge engine online right away. He will sacrifice his insolent neonate end of turn. Discarding a Steak Winamp, going to dredge a Steak Winamp. So dredge five. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Not a great dredge here for David. No dredgers, no prize amalgam, no narcomy, but none of it. You see, he's going to leave the graveyard, I think, up. He would like to leave the graveyard up front, but I guess we'll have him put it off to the side. Dredge players have a funny way of playing their deck sometime. Yeah, and it's hard to blame him. I mean, the, the cards that are most significant are the graveyard cards. So it makes sense to have them front and center where both players can see them easily and interact with them the way that they need to. David Long, I do not believe, has taken a draw step yet this turn, so he'll draw a card now. Faithless looting time. Yep. Draw two, discard two. That's what the powerful red sorcery does do. Now, it looks like he's picked up a copy of Narc Amoeba, and he's already got one in his hand, so naturally those aren't where he wants them to be. Yeah, not the strongest cards to have in your hand. And like I said, sometimes it takes until turn three for this deck to really get explosive, and this is one of those games. There's Blood Crypt. Looks like that's going to enter the battlefield tap and just going to pass the turn back. Well, Collins Mullen, not under any duress just yet, as he'll draw a card. He's got two copies of Scape Shift in his hand, it looks like. There's a Cinderglade that enters the battlefield untapped. This is a Secure Tribe Elder. That is a Secure Tribe Elder. Pass the turn back. Could be a turn four kill here on the way, folks, as that is a Stinkweed Imp. Going to dredge five. An Imp, a Loam, a Neonate a Golgari Thug, and one that we're going to have to take a look at as Collins is already doing that. That's Driven to Despair. <laughs> Prepare to tilt your necks at least once here. Because that's a two up here in David Long's deck, and you got to wonder what the heck is that doing in there. So let's take a look here. Now, for one and a green sorcery, until end of turn, creatures you control gain trample, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. The aftermath version, until end of turn, creatures you control gain menace, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card. So that, that's the important part, is the despair. Ideally, he wants to dredge into this with some Narc Amoebas, with uh, you know, some of his free creatures in play, the prized amalgams, things like that, and then the next turn, be able to just completely strip his opponent's hand. But the thing that's kind of nice about this is that if you do draw the Driven half, that's okay too. Oh, you, you can go crazy dredging. Yeah. Yep. So that's not bad. A little bit of an innovation that we haven't seen in Dredge is that new card there from Hour of Devastation. Yeah, it looks like two in the main deck and a, a third in the sideboard. Okay, so pretty passionate about that card. Discarding from Faithless Looting after a lot of dredging is what David Long is doing right now, but all he can do is pass the turn back. It's just taking him much too long to assemble a battlefield. Collins Mullen on David's end step is going to sacrifice Secure Tribe Elder, search up not one, but two lands. And it looks like it's going to be a forest and a mountain. And when people are getting this many forests, it means scape shift. It's almost time, yeah. Not searching up mountains for prime time.
Collins is going to untap. Now, we know he's already got one copy of Escape Ship in hand. It looked like it was actually two. So if he's able to draw a land, this game is over. Unless he already has one in his hand, then that makes it super easy. Well, there's a land. And Escape Shift. Making it look pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the dredge deck just did not do anything this game. It, it literally has not a single non-land permanent on the battlefield. Yeah. Sacrifice six lands. Go get yourself six mountains, Dave. Excuse me, Collins. And David will be the loser. Collins will be the winner. Oh, that's harsh. Oh, it's just the truth. Oh, fair enough. Stomping ground. Two, three, four, five, six. Mountains, we're all going upstairs. Six times three, Craig, quick math. 17. Mm, okay, that works for me. <laughs> that works. <laughs> Kyle's Mullen going to win game one here over David Locke. <laughs> Scape shift. Very quickly up a game here over Dredge. As we said, this would basically be a matchup where two ships are passing in the night. Yeah, each just doing what they want to do. Especially in game number one, just not a lot of interaction. Now we take a look at the sideboards here, and we're going to start with Long since he'll be on the play for game number two. Four and snaring bridge? Nah. <laughs> Three collective brutality? Okay. Yeah, th these are definitely a possibility. Just having more duress effects against the Scape Shift deck is important. For, uh, for Nature's Claim, you know, this is a deck here in Collins. He does play four Kalani Heart Expedition, and he plays three Prismatic Element, but I still don't love Nature's Claim. Yeah, I don't think you can bring it in. It's just going to be too mediocre too much of the time. you got Ancient Grudges and Maelstrom Pulses and that additional copy of Driven to Despair. And for Driven to Despair, I do want the third one of those. Yeah, I can see that coming in. It's important for him to have some sort of interaction. when. He when he's on the play, it's definitely going to be possible for him to be ahead in the game, get a few creatures on the board early, but he still probably won't be able to win that race. So being able to mind twist his opponent with a Driven to Despair could be huge. We're going to go over to Collins Mullen, who's got four Leyline of Sanctity, four Lightning Bolt, two Anger of the Gods, two Relic Progenitus, a Reclamation Sage of Nature's Claim, and that dastardly Chameleon Colossus, <laughs> which we keep seeing that be a one of in a lot of decks here this weekend. Uh, what are we liking from Collins? Uh, for Collins, I, I would keep it pretty light here. The Anger of the Gods and the Relic of Progenitus, both very strong in this matchup. I don't know if I'd want to go any deeper than that and, you know, dilute the deck from doing what it's trying to do. Well, those are the options there for both players. They will sideboard, shuffle up. David Long will be on the play. See if he can do a little bit more than he did in game number one. Otherwise, we're going to move into our backup match here pretty quickly uh, <laughs> as these players do finish up. Let's talk about the Season 2 schedule of the SCG Tour where we kick things off with the Season 1 Invitational Week, and that was won by Brian Koval, who is in attendance here this week and is our defending Invitational Champion. Then we had the Cincinnati Open Weekend, which was our first for Hour of Devastation, won by an innovative four-color control deck. After that, we went to our team open in Atlanta, which was won by Tom Ross, Jody Keith, and Todd Stevens. Syracuse last weekend, won by Dan Musser with Eldrazi Tron. We'll crown a champion here in Richmond soon enough. Then in September, bit of a breaker on the SCG tour before we go over to Louisville. Then we'll do some we'll do some standard in Dallas, which will be the Ixalan release weekend. Modern in Charlotte. And as we go to our second page of the schedule, we'll do Cincy for some modern, Legacy for Washington, DC, regionals. Well, we'll have more information at go.starcitygames.com slash regional soon enough. Team open in Baltimore, and then that season two invitational weekend at the Berglund Center in Roanoke, Virginia, December 1st through the 3rd. Standard and modern with a standard top eight. And as most of you do know at this point, when you do play in our standard opens and classics, you'll get some play mats. Now for standard, we're talking Bond to the glorified invocation style for our standard open and classic players. For modern, it's going to be our good friend Spell Pierce, which is my favorite artwork that we do have on the SCG Tour right now. And then for Legacy, Days is no slouch for our Legacy Open and Classic players. Free and exclusive play mats with entry into any Season 2 Open or Classic here on the SCG Tour as they get ready here for game number two between David Long and Collins Mullen Dredge the Escape Shift. Craig, what's our count on different decks that we've watched so far? Uh, I think we're up to 11, maybe it's 12. Beautiful. I mean, just, just the same thing over and over. <laughs> yeah. You know us, always showing the same deck. It's our favorite. Yeah, it's a dozen decks. I could just, just cover modern. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was about to say the same thing. If it was just week in and week out modern. Yeah. Just Right now, modern is so fun. There's not one deck that's just oppressive on the format there's this constant evolution in the metagame because of what's doing well at the time like that's just fun to me that's great so both players are going to take a million and fall down to six cards here so there are decks in magic 
that like there are decks that are named after a specific card. Okay. Tooth and Nail, Scape Shift, Dragon Storm. And I hate those decks. I never draw the card. Okay. Which is completely irrational, but it's just true. Sure. I really like the Scape Shift deck. Like okay. A, like a lot. Uh, oh, you're back in. Well, it's just like so straightforward, and it just does the same thing every game. And like either it's good or it's not. You know, like there's no wiggle room. It's like oh, I'm gonna save this ramp spell for later or something. Like you know, it's sure. Just, it's just I'm gonna cast all my crap, and either you're dead or you aren't. And I just kind of love it. So if I was playing in a modern turn, I think I would do that, just for like one weekend only. It's just like, all right, are you dead? Cool. So, I, so you, you might get confused at some point in the tournament where you're like, am I fish bowling or am I playing for like the top eight of this event? Yeah, yeah, I, I don't it know. It feels just, the exact same. Yeah, it's just the same match every time. It's just like I'm just gonna ramp and kill you. Oh, uh, you have a discard spell. Are you win? <laughs> like that's, I didn't draw Scape Shift. All right, you win. I didn't draw Primeval Titan. All right, I lose. Like, it just seems kind of fun, even though it's, like, kind of mindless. But mindless is good sometimes. Yeah, I... Like, you obviously have decisions. Yeah, I was going to say... I'm not going to sell Collins or anyone playing this deck short, but it's just so straightforward. The whole deck is ramp. Yes. It's all ramp spells, Primeval Titan, like, a Summoner's Pack to search for, a Titan, and then, like, lands. Yeah. But I just kind of love it. Yeah. You do you. Yeah, I just kind of love it. David's going to fall down to five here. Yeah, and I think what, what put this deck over the top, um, which might seem obvious to say, is the Hour of Promise, mm -hmm. where you can search up for those Valakits, and then your mid to late game ramp spells that you draw can still nuke the opponent because you've just searched for two Valakits. I want to get one Raging Ravine in the deck. No, you don't. It's, de it's definitely, no. definitely not good. No, you don't. It is definitely not good, but I just want one to search for when i got to go through the back door. And get them for four, and then five, and then six, because they've worried out all their fatal pushes. What do you think? It's got to be good. It's definitely not good. Yeah, why don't you just kill them with the Chameleon Colossus, man? But I can't search for Chameleon Colossus. No, you can't. I can search for the Raging Ravine. Well, you can with Summoner's Pack. That's true. That's true. I just want like one little ravine or like some colorless land or something. I don't know. <laughs> or a colorless land. <laughs> 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 like a mutavolt. Just yeah. one. Yeah, that's let's, what you need. Let's go, little buddy. In for two. Oh, what's, what's the new one? Uh, there's like the desert you can activate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just want one little land. And people might think you have more deserts in your deck because you're playing the Hour of Promise. Trick them. David kept his five, started things off with the Bloodstained Mire. Collins kept his six. He'll sacrifice the Wooded Foothills. Down to 19 we go. Could be even lower than that. But he's going to search for a mountain. Relic of Progenitus is my guess. You? I was confused for a moment. What you just said makes sense. There we go. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, not forest search? Yeah, you thought for sure it was yeah. search for tomorrow. Yeah. I'm gonna sacrifice Bloodstained Mire, relic that away. Ooh, it's so shiny. It is a shiny one. And we've got two cards tapped opposite directions on the board. Mm -hmm. Man, someone's gotta talk to this kid. <laughs> Before he, oh, he's still young. He could be going down a bad I path. I fixed it. He fixed it. See? See? There you go. Good kid. There you go. Showing a lot of promise. You got it. You got right to him. Got to keep them all turned the same way. You got to have just, uh, how you how you play and tap your cards. I don't know. Just such a big deal to me. Just I, such a big deal. I don't remember. It doesn't even matter. It's a big deal to me. What the matchup was, but uh, but I was playing against someone. And I had my lands very neatly arranged. And then I had a few tokens very neatly arranged. Okay. And it was a person that thinks with their hands. Okay. So there's like, oh, like how many lands do you have? And they reached over and touched my lands. Oh, that's it. That's and, it. And not okay. You know, all of a sudden my lands are not all neatly arranged and straight. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, obviously I straightened them back out. And then later in the game they did it again. Unreal. Yeah, I was just like, man, one more time, man. <laughs> One more time. We'll see what happens. Cathartic Union discarding Sneakweed Up and, and uh, Golgari Thug. So there's a dredge of four, and now this will be a dredge of five. It's a Stinkweed Imp. Any amalgams or Narc Amoebas here for David? There's an amalgam, and there's an Narc Amoeba. Okay. So he's got a little something cooking. He's going to get the dredge again for three. A reunion, along with a Blood Crypt and a Copper Line Gorge. Good, not great, that dredge. Well, here's the thing. He gets to get on the battlefield. Yes. Because Narcomib is going to come back, which means Amalgam is going to come back. And that puts Driven to Despair online. Good point. Good point. And now we're going to go back over to Collins, who's, you have to imagine, got some interest in removing the graveyard now with the Relic. So 
There's a little bit of faithless looting down there. He's just going to normally activate it. Uh, I like that. Let's let's see if he messes up. <laughs> All right, Neonate, good choice. <laughs> Colin's someone who's played a lot of Dredge, too, by the way. So he's very familiar with playing the deck. You have to imagine he's familiar with playing against it as a result. And we'll see what he wants to do here on, yes, believe it or not, only his second turn of the game. As David had a pretty nice second turn, though he did mulligan to five. Yeah, but now he's all set up. Uh, he can dredge that life from the loan, and there's a faith that's looting for him to flash back. So very strong argument to be made for just, you know, Collins getting the graveyard right now. Stopping around is going to enter the battlefield untapped. Search for tomorrow is going to go on suspend. And Collins may... Let David dredge? I'm not sure. This is kind of an interesting situation. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna just say go. So will David dredge or will David take a draw? He's gonna dredge loan. Three cards are gonna go into the graveyard. Looks like it may have been another loam, a stinkweed imp, and a copper line gorge. So now we are still in David's draw step, perhaps. And Colin said, yeah, keep going. Playing with fire. Yeah, well, that dredge didn't change anything. Mm -hmm. Life in the loam. Have to get back like a copper line gorge, a blood crypt, and a basic mountain. Is that okay? David's got a couple of cards in hand. Let's see if Collins wants to pull the trigger on the relic now. And it looks like the answer is yes. So, all these cards are going to go away. Collins will draw a card. Loma will resolve. Won't get any of its targets, but it'll be placed in the graveyard. So, another dredger down there. Now, here's an attack for four. Mullen's going to fall down to 13. And pass. Let's go back over to Collins. Yeah, that worked out very well for Collins. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, David missed a land drop there, so he really needed those lands from the life from the loam. Being patient, pretty good. This kid's got some promise. I think so. Yeah. Here's a far seek. That'll resolve, of course, no counter spells here for David Long. So we'll see what land the Collins wants to search up. Could be time for a Cinder Glade or a Stomping Ground. It'll be a Stomping Ground. And then we'll see if he's got a land to play. He's got the search tomorrow. I'll suspend one, so that's going to come off next turn. And Valakut will be the land he plays after the Far Seek. Not really a lot he can do past that. Does have scape shift in hand, so that's something to work towards. Don't pass the turn back. So we go over to David Long. Dredge loan. Three cars on the way. Faithless looting, Golgari Thug, Stomping Ground. Not too bad, but I think the card worth mentioning is the cathartic reunion that David has in his hand, which means that his mulligan to five was. Excellent. Yeah, it really was, but he, he's going to have to loan back the land here. I don't think so. Oh, he's starting this way, of course. Yeah. So he's going to reunion. He's going to discard Imp and Thug, which means he's got three dredgers in the grave. And, and, and if I'm David right now, my goal is to let's let's snap off some Dark Amoebas and some Prize of Malcolm. No, yeah, yeah, you're definitely right. This is a better line to be taking. Now it's going to be another Imp, so here come five more cards. Conflagrates in that dredge five and the first one we saw driven to despair and now here comes thug so here comes four more another copy of driven to despair and there's a dacmore salvage in there and his creatures are being so elusive yeah no amalgams no narc amoebas. this is kind of the annoying thing when you're playing dredges you're really hoping you hit those cards a lot of the time wasn't able to find them this go around as there's a hit for not or excuse me four four to knock collins down to nine Search going to come off suspend. And now if you're David, you're hoping you're not dead. But David is at 19. 
Yep, not 18. Not 18. Definitely important. Yep. There's the basic mountain. We also haven't seen blood gas out of David Longstack. Yeah, I think there's one in the graveyard right now. There is. Just no land. Yeah. Uh, he is playing some blood gas. He's playing four copies, as usual. It's just so important to get some of these creatures on the board early. Uh, they're big payoffs for his Driven to Despair, and they're the clock that he needs against this Scape Shift deck. And he's had some difficulty finding them. Tough thing, too, for David right now is that it, with regards to Despair, no black man on the battlefield. Got a stomping around a mountain. Yep. Now, if he takes a draw step, maybe he spikes a black source. Who knows? We'll see if we, assuming we get back to his turn. But it's, it would still only be discard two. Yeah, it wouldn't be that great. Well, he would get a hasty blood gas back. Oh, that's true. It so could it be, would be discard three. It could be discard three. Yeah. I like the idea of Driven and Despair in this deck, actually. It's a pretty sweet innovation. Yeah, and as we've said, he, he's playing a lot of them. Two in the main, one in the board. That's, yeah. that's a lot. It's not there on accident. Colin's going to take a little while on his turn. He's going to play a Cinder Glade. That'll enter the battlefield untapped. Now he's going to play a Far Seek. Looks like he might be thinking Cinderglade here, but he's going to go with Stomping Ground. This is kind of interesting because I think he might have some interest in just knocking him down to one. No, no. So, so the land that he just searched for dealt him David Long three. Ah, right. Okay. And then the yep. scape shift, as long as he has enough mountains, will deal another 18. Okay. Good call, Craigers. Turn four again, I think. Yeah, I think I th either turn four or turn five for Collins. The, the, the game, the turns took so long this game, I don't remember what yeah. turn heard. Like. Yeah. Three mountains. Let's make it four. I, I'm sure he did this math before he, he took this line. Yeah. That's six of them. Six times three is 18. David Long at 16. Too little. Too late. Is Collins Mullins going to win this game and match here over David Long. Two games to zero. Scape Shift looking very impressive once again in the fan in the hands, excuse me, of Mullen taking down David Long playing Dredge. So Collins moves up to five and one, and David Long going to slide down to four and two. And that's a situation there, at least to me, where obviously David Mullen to five that game. Um, 